Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus 33. And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart, and go up hence, thou and the children which thou hast brought out of the land of Egypt. God is still angry. That sin of idolatry. I mean, he's dis disowned them. He is so angry with them. Unto the land which I swear unto the Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying unto thy seed will I give it if it wasn't for because let's look at 32 verse 12 Moses speaking wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say for mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest. Oh, by thy own self, I swear by me, Jehovah, and says unto them, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and all the land I have spoken of it of will I give unto thy seed, and they shall inherit it forever. Now the word of God. Moses reminds God in his anger. Had God never said anything to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he could have wiped them out. And would justify. But God has said to Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, he had made an oath, a covenant, and promises. God is bound by his word, so when he says, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee, God said it. And he's bound by it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. God said that. He's bound by it. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth your sins, First John 1 9 he is able and just to forgive us he's bound by his word ye must be born again hi God I come to you with religion can't let you in because I said you must be born again don't come to me with your religion don't come to me with your works don't come to me with nothing but Jesus anybody in the church age they will not get into heaven outside the gospel of believing with the heart. God's bound by his word. If God said it to you, now be careful. Because God says things to Israel. He didn't say to the Christian. He says things to the world that he didn't say to the Jew. You know what's protecting their butt is the word of God. You know what I rest upon? I rest upon the word that Jesus said. You know what Jesus said on that cross? It is finished. That's God speaking. I'm not a Jehovah Witness. And then when Jesus said, as far as salvation, it is finished. Well, how dare you think you can add things to it? Unto thy seed will I give it. And I will send an angel before thee. Now he talked about my angel, verse 34, previous chapter with a capital A. 
His angels going with him. And I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hevite, and the Jebusite. And the kind of way it will happen later on. But really, it did not happen in the book of Joshua because of unbelief and disbelief. And not doing what God told them to do. You realize if they would have done what God told them to do, there would be no Philistines today to get no PLO. That's Israel's land. That's not the PLO. That's not the Arabians' land. Had Israel done right in Joshua, David would never have fought the Philistines. They would never have been a problem to him. Unto a land flowing with milk. That's calcium. That's what the body needs. That's what a baby needs. That's not only a drink, but it's a nutritious drink. It's mother's milk. It's nothing like it. I know they got imitation formula and stuff like that, but that's not as good as fresh. And honey. That's a natural sweetener. It's not going to give you cancer. It's not going to make your eyes go blurry. As artificial sweeteners will do. I will not go up in the midst of thee. Whoa. God says, I'm not going with you no more. For thou art a stiff-necked people. If I go in the midst of you, at least I could soon be in the way. This is because of the idolatry. This is not because, oh, we need food, we need water. Oh, God, the enemy's coming. Did you bring us out here to kill us? That moment they got into idolatry, look at what's happening. God has never been so angry with the children of Israel as up to this point. And when you get Jeremiah and you get them and you get the prophets coming to this, you, you've got gods on every corner of Jerusalem. And he has the Babylon sack Jerusalem. And when the people heard the evil tidings, you know what gospel means? Gospel means good news, good tidings. This is opposite of good news. This is opposite of gospel. Evil tidings? I don't know what a word is for that. You got good news? What's the good news? The gospel. They're one and the same. They mourned. And no man did put on his ornaments. Now, I read that as I think of them as a Christmas tree. Things dangling. So, you see that word ornaments and your Christmas and all that? That's the first time it shows up and they took it off because God's angry with them. So you're going to go down the store and buy them and put them on the tree where Jeremiah says, uh-uh, uh-uh, that's the even thing. For the Lord has said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are stiff-necked people. I will come up into the midst of thee in a moment and consume thee. Therefore, now put off thy ornaments from thee. That is God speaking. Well, can I have a Christmas tree with ornaments? What did God just say? <laughs> Let's see what God says. And I may know what to do with unto thee. God doesn't even know what to do. Is it? God said, I don't even know what to do with you yet. You better strip of those ornaments. You better mourn. I, He's already plagued them. There's already been 3,000 of them killed by the tribe of Levi. And with the rest of them, God's like, get those things off. I, I, <sighs> There's just sometimes with a child and a parent, that, that, that parent does not know what to do. And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments three times in a row. They took them off, get them off, and they stripped them off. By the Mount Horeb, and that's Sinai. It's through there. Now watch this. 
And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp. Now, this is not the tabernacle that is going to be built for God. This is another tent assembly. Our tent means scriptural. It, Moses has a tabernacle tent meaning right here. And he moves it out of the congregation and moves it outside the congregation. Why? Idolatry. You mess with your dollars and you call them aids of worship, whatever you do. I am glad that I am not going to stand before God, even as a Christian, at the judgment seat of Christ. I'm glad I'm not going to stand before Jesus or God in either judgment with any idols. You will see the wrath of God. Just look at it. If you don't, then God needs to apologize to these people here in Exodus 31, 32, and 33. If, if your idols do not get under the blood of Jesus Christ and God shows you any kind of mercy outside the blood of Jesus Christ, he's got to apologize to these people. And he's not going to do that. Great white throne judgment, these idols, God will be angry with you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. He's not going to say, oh, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. <laughs> I never knew you. <laughs> Sing a little, you know, mouse song. It's going to be anger. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp. As a far off from the a far off from the camp, not only a far off, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord went out of the unto the tabernacle. They came out of the assembly. You say, what would that be like? It would be like preaching to someone at a public event, like, like us for the farmer's market. They would come out of that farmer's market, cross the street, and say, I want to meet with God. With everybody else behind looking at you. You know, look at that guy. Look at Samuel. He's going over there to Moses in his tent. Who does he think he is? Holy Joe? That's the only way you were going to get to God this point which was without the camp and it came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone in the tabernacle keeping an eye on Moses we didn't know where he went what happened to him how long did he get and it came to pass, as Moses entered the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. That cloud is no more in front of him. It's away from him. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door. Now, we watched a great video yesterday, and a bunch of colleagues, well, I want to see something. Show me evidence. Haven't we read enough evidence as far as Exodus 1 to Exodus 33 and they still will not get right? Here's his cloudy pillar guiding us by day and by fire by night. Isn't that enough? And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. Wow. They're having services at their house in their tent door. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. Moses knew exactly how God sounded in his voice. And he turned again into the camp. He's leaving. Going back into the camp. 
But his servant Joshua, oh, his, now he's starting to show up a lot. The son of Nun. You got a bunch of women call themselves nun, but in the Bible, nun is a man. And he's not married to Joshua. He's the father of Joshua. Joshua, Jehovah saves. He's Moses' right-hand man right now. The young man departed not out of... Joshua stayed where the Lord was while Moses left. Now, isn't that interesting? The tabernacle was not with the children of Israel, but there's Joshua there. So, I wonder, and I, I'm going to give a little illustration here, but can you just imagine the nun family? Where's Joshua? I haven't seen Joshua. Uh, let's, let's go find Joshua. Oh, he's over there at the, at the tabernacle. Joshua, why aren't you about your father's business? No, you're not. I'm at my father's business right now at the temple where God is. That's where Joshua is right now. He's a young man. I don't know how young it was. Joshua is where God is. And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou saith unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know who thou wilt send with me. I need help here. I thought Aaron was walking with him. Aaron just blew it. Now Moses is even angry and not trusting in Aaron. I, I need someone else here. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Moses is quoting God. <laughs> this is what God told Moses. Notice what Moses is doing with his relationship with God. God, yes, this is what you said. Now, we don't have book and chapter numbers yet, but Lord, <laughs> you said this. You said that. Now, therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way. Uh -oh. who, said, who said in the Bible, on the way, uh, there's Jesus, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And Moses is not doing anything. He's saying, God, I need grace. I need mercy. I need to know where to go. And P.S. with them people too. They're your people. Now, remember, remember God said over here in verse 1, Thou has brought out it. And Moses just throws it right back at God, thy people. God, will you stop rejecting them? They're yours. And I need your guidance for them. And he said, My presence shall go with thee. So Moses does find grace. Moses is in the will of God by that answer. And I will give thee rest. With all them people. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, Carries us not up. Hence, God, if you're not going with me, I ain't moving. I ain't taking one step unless you take it with me. Moses is crying out for help here. These people have been wanting to stone him. They have wanted to gather a group of people to go back. They want to go back. They have not trusted God. Is have you ever heard Moses gripe yet? And complain? He hasn't. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? 
Is it not in thy wait, is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. Here is separation. These people are not to be like anybody else, and nobody else is supposed to be like them. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace. There it is. That's what Moses asked for. There's God saying it. G-R-A-C-E. You have found grace in my sight. And I know thee by name. Now we talked about that book. Moses said, let's block my name out. And God keeps affirming. Keep giving him strong. Your name. I know who you are. It's your name I know. And it ain't done. And he said, I beseech thee, Lord, God, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. I want grace, now show me glory. Moses is not just happy being content. He wants it all with God. He wants to get closer to God. He spent 40 days and 49 nights up on the mountain. With God. He's a friend face to face with God. And he said, God speaking, I will make my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. I am. He's already done that. See, I think Moses has lost a little hope here thanks to Israel. Because of that idolatry. Because of the wrath of God. If God's ready to give up on them. What am I going to do? And God's like. Calm down. I know. And I. And will be gracious. To whom I will be gracious. And will show mercy. On whom I will show mercy. And Moses has been pointed out. And he said, God, thou canst see my face. So when Moses said, I want to see your glory, Moses was like, I want to see you. So he didn't see God up on the 40 days and 40 nights. Because he said, for there shall no man see me and live. Well, let's run back to 2410. I'll tell you exactly who he said after this. 24.10. And I'm going to add lib after this. I, I think I'd be doing good. 24.10. We'll start in verse 9. Then went up Moses and Aaron and Nahab and Abihu, 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, the paved work of sapphire. They saw God. And God says over here, no man can see my face and live. Then there's a, there's a contradiction. And Jesus said, no man has seen any God at time. He's a spirit. So what had happened on that mountain? I'm going to speculate. I'm going to add live. If I'm wrong, I'll put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's go up to a mountain, which I think is Sinai. Many do believe with me that. Oh, Peter, I'm getting sleepy. Yeah, John, let's take a little nap here. And Jesus is there. He, he's bright and he's in his glory. And there's two men there. One of them, I believe, Jesus walked. Good to see you again, Moses. Recognize this spot? Now, I, I'm assuming. I'm assuming that Jesus and Noah's already been here before, right now, where we are. I mean, Moses. And that, I want to see the next one. I want to see the next best thing Moses has said. I want to see you, God. Now, I don't know what the face of Jesus looked like in his pre-carnate state, but the Bible speaks about the angel of the Lord, and that is Jesus before 
he took on that body. Now here's Moses standing before the body prepared for him from the foundation of the world, the Savior, Jesus Christ. A Joshua. He's like, I want to see your face. For there shall no man see my face and live. And Jesus in his glory on that mount was white and, and pure and light. And that's as a man on a sin-cursed world. Imagine what he is like in heaven today. Imagine. When we die, if the rapture is not in our time. If we die, the Bible says to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. We are living, uh, we are leaving a sin cursed world. The sin cursed body is, is going to be buried. You be present with the Lord in your soul. Imagine how wonderful those, your, your soul eyeballs are going to. You can't even speak about the glory that we are going to, that day, whether it be rapture or death, what you're going to see. We're going to come to a point now, after this, we're going to see Moses' face is going to be lit up. If I can use it, there was a church sign down the road. If I can use it, maybe Moses' face got S-O-N-B-U-R-N. Sun burn of the holiness. I hate to use it. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me. Oh, yes, there. Any, you want to guess on which side that place is? I'm going to say right hand side. And thou shalt stand upon a rock. That rock is given water. And it shall come to pass. While my glory, God speaking, passes by, that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, broken. Isaiah 53. Wit. Describes his back as, as the furrows of a farmer's land. And I will cover thee with my hand. And will I pass by. And I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, and that's not the butt. I heard a preacher one time preach about that, and he was talking about Genesis. The history that Moses never lived. To write it down. That was a wonderful message. God's glory was from Genesis 1 to Genesis 50. Well, that, I mean, you can't be perverted and think you're going to see God's butt. It ain't that. Definitely. But my face shall not be seen. Now, it doesn't say not ever to be seen. This not be seen. And I'm going to reference over here. Let me check this. I didn't check this reference. I think I got references in here that. It says in Second Corinthians three eighteen, but we but we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, and change into the same image from glory to glory. Even as the Spirit of the Lord, one day we're going to get a brand new body, and we're going to we're going to see God somehow, some way. But show me a sign, show me something, give me evidence. Do you realize that the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the children of Israel, and the men of Rome saw God's face when Jesus walked around on this planet, and they gave him a cross? And at his trial of the Sanhedrin. Did you not hear this man blasphemy? He says he's God. Yes, he is. 
and you couldn't even recognize it. 